yeah my dear friends i will come you yet to another uh, episode of my biology lessons i am still your teacher Chos, but in warinda for today in this episode we are going to we are starting our series concerning practicals and we are going to begin with a practical which is about food tests we usually eat a lot of foods but in the laboratory uh, in the biology lab we can be able to test different foods for to see which food values are there uh, today's episode we are going to look at uh, carbohydrates you know what carbohydrates are the energy giving foods these are energy energy giving foods foods which are broken down to give us energy however you know there that we have other also proteins and others can also give us energy but this is the first class of food uh, which gives us energy so carbohydrates are energy giving uh, energy giving foods and it's what we are going to look at for today but you know that carbohydrates are also very many we have also we have got carbohydrates which are categorized into three groups we have got carbohydrates which we call monosaccharides monosaccharides and we have got carbohydrates we call disaccharides disaccharides and then we have what we call poly, polysaccharides polysaccharides these ones are the simple sugars these ones are the simple sugars the monosaccharides are the simple sugars and then the, the, the poly the poly are the complex sugars are the complex sugars then these ones are intermediate so we are going to look at one by one but for today we are going to look at more on the complex sugar we are going to the complex sugar because when you look at its structure the structures are bigger they, they are more complex when you look at this the structure of monosaccharides they are simpler so that's why we call them simple sugars so today we are going to look at the complex sugars and one of these complex sugar we have got the starch we have got starch however we have got very many other complex sugars for example uh, cellulose this one which is found in the cell wall of plant of plant cells and so on but for today in our in our for this episode of, of food test we are going to look at how do we test for a polysaccharide which polysaccharide is starch so we are going to look at the test for starch in this episode then as you go on we are also going to look at how we test for disaccharide and monosaccharide and we shall be talking more about them when we come to that so we are going to look at how we test for starch so in the laboratory the reagent we use for testing starch is none other than a reagent which is called iodine and iodine as you see uh, from my my table iodine is brown in color so this is the reagent we use for testing for uh, uh, for, for, for starch which is brown in color and we are using drops that's why you see in my bottle I am having a dropper so this dropper is what we use to test uh, to pick drops from here to use in our test now which foods contain starch yeah foods like cassava this cassava contains starch yeah this is cassava for those who don't know cassava Uganda we, in Uganda we grow cassava and this is how it looks like we have also got what we call sweet potatoes this is a sweet potato it also contains a lot of starch and so on uh, you may ask yourself that why do we have all these things yeah also this, this is the this is the uh, maize Ugandan maize so this maize is uh, also having sugars uh, uh, also when you look at this one this is sugar cane I also brought sugar cane to show you that this sugar cane also has sugar that's why actually it's called sugar cane uh, and the sugar it has for it the sugars it has is uh, the disaccharide or what you can call sucrose so that's why I brought them here to also show you However, I will use them when we reach that they are, they, are, they, are, they are respective practicals. We are also going to use them in detail. So today I'm going to use my uh, my, 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 my cassava and my sweet potato. And then I also already am lucky to be having the, uh, the one which is already manufactured, the starch which is already obtained from all these things. And this starch is here. I'm having my bottle which, has, which, is, which is containing starch. So I'm going to first pick so I'm going to start from here and I test and we see following this test here so our test is that the, to once an interchange of the solution we add three drops so I'm going to make a solution from this from this starch then after in that solution I'm going to add three drops of iodine and see what happens and then we shall see what to write here and then how to conclude okay so if I get uh, my starch here and I pick just a smaller thing smaller part Smaller sample, see, just very small sample, and then I put it here, and I make a very 
a very nice solution from it. I have this is water. This is my water. And I make a small solution from it. I make a small solution from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is the problem. This starch is, is, uh, is soluble. Is, is, is soluble. The one which is, which is made is soluble. So if I make, if I, if I get now, I want to ask you, uh, which solution is this? When you look at this solution, I know you will tell me that this solution is, uh, you tell me that this solution is, uh, is what? I think this is white. So this is white solution. So it means, um, when you are going to write the observation, you need to first take note of the color of the initial solution. So the initial solution is white. And then this solution is, tends to be, see it is also not clear very, very well. So we usually, usually put the word tabid. Yeah, but the word tabid, tabid means something which is, uh, which is, uh, which is dirty, something which is not clear. So this is white, but since the solution is a liquid form, it's a liquid form, the state of matter is a solution, or it is liquid. The liquid is the state of matter, but here we call it solution. So you have a white solution, though some people also call it the white tabid solution. So when you find white tabid solution, it means that it is a solution which is white, but not clear. So the tabid is catering for not clear. So I have a white solution, which is here. So this white solution is going to be my solution, what? Uh, my solution X. And so what is going to be now, from this solution X, which is white, I'm going to pick one centimeter tube. So if I pick, for example, one centimeter tube, the very small sample part of it. If I pick a small part of it, yes, something like this. And then I add, they are telling me that I add three drops of iodine. I, my iodine is here. If I get it and I, I pick three drops and I add them here, please make sure I take note what will happen. Um, if I add three drops, that is one, two, three. So if I add three drops, I don't know what you are seeing there, but uh, according to what I'm seeing here, for me I'm seeing something which is black. So I don't know what you are seeing there. So for me I'm seeing something which is black. I'm seeing a black solution. So it means that, uh, so let me put it here. Let me put it here. So me, I'm seeing a black solution. So it means that, uh, uh, if I have a white table solution and I add three drops of iodine, this white table solu this white solution, or white table solution turns, turns to a black, a black solution. Uh, most of you, usually, usually some students like saying blue black, but I don't recommend blue black because uh, a color which is blue black is is funny. So you either say blue or you see you say black. If you have seen blue, you say blue. If you have seen black, you say black. So a white type solution, a white solution turns into a black solution. So it means uh, in my wording, in my answer, I have talked about the color of the initial color that I was having, which was white. I hope you see it, it is here white, a white solution. And the state of matter is a liquid. It is a, this one is a liquid. So if it's a liquid, then I will say solution. So I have that. So I have got max for that. Then after adding the three drops of iodine, what have I seen? I have seen something which is black. So you being able to take the the, 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 the the color of the initial of the solution after you get a mark there. And then what the state of matter? The state of matter is a solution because it's a liquid, it is a, it is in the form of a liquid. So it's in the form of a liquid, you call it uh, a solution. Yeah, it is a solution. But uh, as we go on, we're also going to find that sometimes we can get what we call precipitates. But this is a solution. So this this one which is a solution, I will come and I say it turns into a black solution. So I also have that mark. So you, this is how you get your marks when they are awarding you. So in case I get such an observation, it means that I have got a lot of starch. So it means this solution, like the way I've added just right off from here, it means this solution that I've made uh, contains a lot of starch. So my conclusion is, by the virtue of this observation, my conclusion is that it much, much starch, much starch is present. So we can use the present simple tense like what I'm using here, but at the same time, you can also use the past tense. For example, you can also say a white solution, turned it. Hey, because you are reporting to the somebody, somebody who is going to mark you. You can also say a white solution, turned to a black solution. You can, also, you, also, you can also get that, you can also speak it in that tense. But for me, I'm using present simple tense, which is also very okay. 
So you mentioning much, you being able to say much, you get a mark, and also identifying the food, you also get that mark, which is for starch. So it's when you say much starch present, you get those, those marks there. So what if I don't have any starch? Because I've said much here. What if I have something, starch which is not that much? Or what if I have something which is very little? What do I observe? So if I have much starch, that's what I observe. But let us pass to the other control. What if I don't have any starch? I told you this was this was water. So I want us to first get the solution, which is just we don't know, but the solution I we don't know. Now this solution, uh, this solution I'm going to also add there iodine. We don't know and we want to see if it is indeed it is also having starch. So if I add iodine, three drops, one, two, three. What do you observe? Now when you compare these two. Of course, you see that this one is black, but this one has remained brown. So here it means in this particular case, I do not have any, I do not have any, any starch. So in that particular case, starch is absent. So in case starch is not there, what happens is that when you add iodine, when you add iodine, uh, a colorless solution, because this particular case I have used a colorless solution, but you can still be having a white solution, a colorless solution, Tons. Uh, so, so let me write down here. So, in case I don't have starch, I will have a curry solution, a white solution, or whatever, a yellow solution, whatever. It will turn or it turns to a brown, a brown solution. So, in case you add iodine and you get a product which is like this, the way you see this one here, then it means that in that in that solution which you had at first. There is no any starch because you see it has remained. When you look at this one, you go look at and you compare it with this one, you see it's that totally different. But this is brown because this brown was the color of the iodine which you added there. It is turned it's almost turning into yellow because uh, because it has been diluted because of the solution, the solution has diluted it. That's why it is almost turning into yellow. So uh, whatever solution, it can be a black solution, I mean it can be a white solution, it can be a, 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 a whatever solution turns into a brown so whatever whenever it turns into a brown solution then it means that there we say there we say that starch is absent so we can say starch starch absent so here you also get the you also get that mark for you to identify that starch is absent so the question is what if, what if i have things which are intermediate here so in, in case i have moderate starch when when starch is too much i have black so it means if i have something which is intermediate, it means if I had a white solution, here I will be having that a white, a white solution, when a white solution turns, turns to a blue solution. In case you add and you get the solution, whatever solution you are having, turning into a blue solution, then there it means, uh, for example, you are saying a white solution turning into a blue solution, my emphasis is here on the blue solution, there, that one means that the moderate starch, moderate starch is what? Is present, is present. And then in case the white tablet solution, the white tablet solution or the white solution turns to purple, a purple solution, a purple solution, so my emphasis here is on what? The purple solution. These colors can be can change. This one can be a color solution, it can be a yellow solution, it can be whatever. So my emphasis is on here. The purple solution. When, when whatever solution you have turns into a purple solution, then it means there we have little, little, little starch, little starch present. Yeah, so in case you have a color solution or you have uh, the white solution or whatever solution you are having, when you add iodine and it turns into a purple solution, that is little. When it is blue, you get moderate. When you see black, when you see real black and you can see that it is black, then that is much starch. And then in case you add the iodine and it remains brown, then that you said starch is absent. So in that particular case, when they are marking, they will mark you the color of the initial solution, the color of the the color and the state of the of the initial substance you have, then the color and the state after adding a reagent. So after adding a reagent, this is what we have gotten. 
Uh, before adding the reagent, we had a white solution. After adding the reagent, we got a black solution. And that's how we concluded. But in case we get a blue solution, we conclude like that. In case we get a yellow purple solution, we get like that. However, here, even sometimes here, uh, the color of the solution can turn. When the color of the solution, whatever, assume it is a, a white solution or a color solution, when it turns to yellow, into a yellow solution, likewise, this one here, the conclusion is the same. The conclusion here is still the same, that starch is, the starch is absent. Why? Because at times, when iodine, for example, when you cut this one, this is almost turning into yellow. So it is brown by turning into yellow. Why? Because when iodine is diluted, uh, it turns into what? Into yellow. So sometimes when you get and then the solution turns into yellow, then it means in that case, still also starch will be absent because the, the solution would have turned yellow because the iodine has been diluted by the solution you added there. So that is how we record. That's how we test for, for starch. So tomorrow, if you're in a, a, about an you test the solution, they give a solution, they say test, cut out this test, and then write the observation. This is what you are expected to write. For example, if you add, you first test the initial color and the state, like for example, white solution. Then you tell us what you have seen after. If you have seen black solution, this is how you conclude. If you have seen blue solution, you tell us what this is how you conclude. Like that, like that. Now, why do we give you max in this case? You are given max in this case because in practical, we are trying to test your, your ability to, to observe and conclude. For example, if you are able to see very well and you see that indeed the color was solution, I uh, mean the color was white, then you are given a mark. Why? Because tomorrow we are training you to, to be sure to be to, so that tomorrow when you become a, for example, like a doctor and you are taking, you are checking somebody, uh, you, are, you are trying to examine somebody, you should be able to tell the exact thing that you have seen, not only guess, because if you guess, you might end up uh, uh, making that person to die. So this is what we are trying to train you about. We are trying, train, uh, we are trying to train you to ensure that you'll be able to tell us exactly what you're able to see. So I advise that in case you're in a practical and going out to this practical of starch, make sure you observe very well and make sure that you are able to state the observations very well. And in that case, you're able to also to conclude. Tomorrow when you become a physician and then uh, you, are, you are taking, uh, you are trying to examine somebody, you should be able to write what you have seen on this patient and be able to conclude very well on the, uh, on the exact med uh, medication that the, this person should be able to take. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you are going to make sure you are going to make this person not get healed or you might, uh, this person might actually end up dying. So that's what we are trying to train you here. So as we continue looking at even this other, uh, the, the, the sugar. Yeah. So as we continue looking at other sugars, we are also going to learn more, uh, more of these skills of how to observe and how to write. So make sure the, you always check me out. Make sure if you want to subscribe, make sure you subscribe. And in the next episodes, you are going to be looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, the tests for other carbohydrates that is reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. And